Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Leather is one of humanity's oldest and most versatile materials. It's a fabric that has evolved from prehistoric times used for clothing, shelter, and tools to becoming a symbol of luxury in fashion and design. The process of transforming raw animal hides into supple, durable leather is a fascinating blend of ancient traditions and modern technology. In this video, we'll dive deep into the stages of leather production, exploring the intricate and time-consuming processes that turn animal hides into the high-quality material we know and use today. Leather making is believed to have started more than 7,000 years ago, with early humans using crude methods to preserve animal hides for clothing and shelter. The early methods were quite rudimentary, relying on natural resources such as water, salt, and the sun. These ancient people would scrape the hides clean, then stretch and dry them under the sun, or treat them with oils and fats to keep them from hardening. Over time, humans developed more sophisticated methods, leading to the complex leather production techniques that exist today. Leather can be made from the skins of various animals, but the most common are cattle hides, which account for the majority of global leather production. Other animal skins like sheep, goats, and pigs are also widely used, each offering a unique texture and quality to the final product. Leather production today is a massive global industry, yet despite technological advances, it remains a craft that requires skill and precision at every step. Let's begin with the first critical stage of the process, curing and cleaning the hides. The first step in making leather is preserving the raw hides so they don't decompose. Fresh animal hides are highly susceptible to bacterial growth, which can cause them to rot quickly. To prevent this, hides are cured shortly after the animal has been skinned. Curing is typically done by applying large amounts of salt to the hide drawing out moisture, and inhibiting bacterial growth. Sometimes, hides are soaked in brine, a solution of salt water, which serves the same purpose. The salt curing process can take anywhere from several hours to several days, depending on the size and thickness of the hide. Once cured, the hides are ready to move to the next stage, but before the transformation into leather can begin, the hides must be thoroughly cleaned to remove any remaining blood, fat, and tissue that could interfere with the tanning process. The cleaning process is often done in large drums filled with water and special chemicals that help soften and clean the hides. Once cleaned, the hides undergo a process known as liming. This involves soaking the hides in a solution of lime or calcium hydroxide for several days. Liming is an essential step because it loosens the hair and opens up the hide's fiber structure, making it more receptive to the chemicals used later in tanning. The lime solution also helps to remove any remaining fats, greases, and proteins that are embedded in the skin. After the liming process, the hides are taken through a mechanical process to remove the loosened hair and other unwanted materials. This step, called unhairing, uses a machine equipped with blunt rollers or knives to scrape away the hair. For some leathers, particularly those where the grain of the skin is desirable, this process is done very carefully to avoid damaging the top layer of the hide. At this stage, the hide still resembles its raw form, though it has been softened, cleaned, and rid of hair. The next step will be tanning, the process that truly transforms the hide into leather. Tanning is perhaps the most important and defining step in leather making. The purpose of tanning is to stabilize the protein structure of the hide, making it more durable, flexible, and resistant to decomposition. Without tanning, the hide would simply rot or harden over time. There are various tanning methods, but the two most common are vegetable tanning and chrome tanning. 
Vegetable tanning is an ancient method that uses natural tannins derived from plants. The hides are immersed in large pits or drums filled with a solution of tannins extracted from tree bark, leaves, and fruits. The process can take several weeks to several months, depending on the thickness of the hide and the desired final texture. Vegetable tanning produces a leather that is firm, durable, and develops a beautiful patina over time. This type of leather is often used for high-quality goods such as saddles, belts, and shoes. Chrome tanning, on the other hand, is a more modern method and is faster than vegetable tanning. This process uses chromium salts, particularly chromium sulfate, to tan the leather. Chrome tanning can be completed in a matter of days and results in a softer, more flexible leather. It's more suited to the mass production of garments, handbags, and upholstery. The trade-off, however, is that chrome tanning can be more harmful to the environment, as the chemicals used are more difficult to manage and dispose of safely. Once the hides have been sufficiently tanned, they are thoroughly washed to remove any excess chemicals or tannins. At this point, the material is no longer referred to as a hide, but as leather. The next step in the process is splitting and shaving. During tanning, hides swell and thicken, so they must be split to the desired thickness. A large machine is used to divide the leather into layers. The top layer, which includes the grain or outer surface, is called full grain leather, prized for its strength and durability. The lower layers are often used for suede or split leather. Once the hide is split, it may be shaved to an even thickness. Shaving is done using a precision machine with rotating blades that trim the leather down to a uniform thickness across the entire surface. This ensures that the leather has the desired feel and is ready for the finishing process. After the leather has been tanned, split, and shaved, it's time to add color and texture through dyeing and finishing. The dyeing process can be done in large drums, where the leather is submerged in dye and tumbled to ensure even color penetration. The type of dye used will depend on the desired outcome, whether it's a uniform color or a more natural, variegated look. In addition to dyeing, leather can be finished with various treatments to enhance its appearance and performance. Leather can be embossed with patterns, buffed to a high shine, or coated with protective finishes to make it more water-resistant or resistant to stains. Some leathers are treated with oils or waxes to give them a soft, supple feel, while others may be polished for a glossy finish. Once the leather has been dyed and finished, it is thoroughly dried to remove any excess moisture. The drying process can take several hours or even days depending on the thickness of the leather and the drying method used. Some leathers are air-dried, while others may be passed through heated tunnels or stretched on frames to maintain their shape and prevent shrinkage. Finally, the leather is conditioned with oils and waxes to restore moisture and flexibility lost during drying. This conditioning helps prevent the leather from becoming stiff or brittle and ensures that it remains supple for years to come. The journey from rawhide to finished leather is a fascinating blend of art, science, and craftsmanship. While technology has certainly streamlined the process in modern times, the basic principles of leather making have remained largely unchanged for thousands of years. Whether vegetable tanned for a rich, natural finish or chrome tanned for soft, pliable texture, leather continues to be a prized material across countless industries. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below on your favorite leather made product. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.